هلو سينيرز رمضان كريم كل عام وانتم بخير ينعاد علينا وعليكم يا رب اوكي during week 5 we discuss together sexual reproduction and seed plants keep in your mind that you learned before that there are two groups of seed plants angiosperms and gymnosperms for angiosperms you learn that we have the monocot and dicot during this week you will learn double fertilization which is a unique feature for angiosperms and you will learn the structure of the seed the function of each part whether for angiosperms or seeds within angiosperms or gymnosperms last week you learned that during seed formation in angiosperms there are two processes the first one which is pollination when pollen lands on the stigma and we discussed this point in details last week the second one which we will discuss today it is fertilization in general the union of the egg and the sperm and as i told you in angiosperms it has a unique feature so the fertilization here actually it is known as double fertilization let's first go through the life cycle of angiosperms you learned before that life cycle of a plant angiosperms are one of these plants it is called alternation of generation and you learn that it is known as alternation of generation because we have two stages that alternate with each other sporophyte alternate with gametophyte sporophyte in which plants have diploid cells the two n alternate with the haploid cell of gametophyte so the haploid cells are actually the egg and the sperm you learned within this cycle that at the end of the sporophyte spores are produced these spores produced by meiosis which means that the diploid cell alternates with haploid cell okay so these spores are actually haploid cells they will go through mitosis to produce cells with the same number of chromosomes so let's start with the first point which is double fertilization a unique feature for angiosperms but before okay explaining for you what is happening within double fertilization let's watch this video which summarizes double fertilization in general Flowering plants undergo a unique reproductive process where there are two fertilization events. This double fertilization event occurs double between the male reproductive organ, the male gametophyte, and the female reproductive organ, the female gametophyte. If you remember, last week you learned the structure of the flower. So we have here the male and female gametophytes. inside the most inner part this innermost part which includes the ovary inside the ovary there are ovules plus style and at the top the stigma where pollen lands okay and here we have the male reproductive part stamen which is made up of filament and anther before the fertilization event can occur the ovule has to undergo some changes at present the ovule contains one reproductive cell known as the megaspore or mother cell this cell is diploid and undergoes meiosis producing four haploid megaspores haploid spores in the yes. majority so of species are haploid. three of these megaspores degenerate leaving only one surviving megaspore there will be one spore. the surviving megaspore expands and undergoes three rounds of mitosis to produce this one haploid cell will go through three rounds of mitosis okay within the first round 
one cell, one haploid cell. So it will form at the end of the first round, two cells, right? Two haploid cells. Then these two haploid cells will go through a second round, okay, of mitosis. So that two will form four. Then these four haploid cells will go through a third Whoa. round of mitosis. So there will be how many haploid cells? Eight haploid cells. Eight haploid cells. Notice now how will they form? And then notice how are they arranged inside the ovule? Eight haploid nuclei. First round, two. As the nuclei have not developed any the individual round, division, they four. initially share the same cytoplasm. The third round, eight. Now notice how this are they arranged. This structure is known as the embryo sac. Within the established embryo sac, cell walls begin to form between most of the nuclei. Three cells named antipodal cells form opposite the opening One, of the ovule, two, three. known as the micropyle. Where is the micropyle? As he mentioned, the opening of the ovule. Here we have one ovule. So this is the opening of the ovule. It is called micropyle, micropyle. So three cells will form opposite to micropyle. Another three cells form above the micropyle. Two of these Above are silicates, the micropyle. and the other is the egg cell. This, this one with red color is the egg cell, okay? So there are eight haploid cells. One of them, where is the opening of the, mic, the ovule, which is called the micropyle? Here we have one egg cell. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Still we have two more, seven, eight. These cells are polar nuclei leaves two nuclei in the center of the ovule. These central nuclei remain together in one large cell. Remain together, so they are the already cell, like and this central nucleate cell, cell to end. which will eventually become part of the double fertilization event. In order for the double fertilization event to occur, the male gametes, the sperm, must travel from the anther to the embryo sac the within the female reproductive organ. Notice these pollen The grains. pollen grain contains two main cells. A cell named the tube cell makes up the bulk. Each pollen grain has two parts, okay? One of them, it's called the pollen tube nucleus. You will notice now in the video and you will watch it how it will form the pollen tube. The second part is the sperm. Bulk of the pollen grain and the sperm cell, which at this stage is known as the generative cell. To reach the embryo sac, a pollen grain must what land on the stigma. What is this? Pollination, when pollen lands on stigma. So the first step of the formation of the seed is actually Once what? Once landed, pollination. it begins to germinate. The tube cell forms a long structure down. This is the first part of the pollen, the pollen tube nucleus. Notice how once the pollen lands on stigma, actually enzymes are secreted, so it will open the stigma. Now this part of the pollen will form a tube. The sperm will travel within this tube. This is why it's called pollen tube nucleus. And that sperm will go through mitosis, so there will be two sperms instead of one. So notice what is unique in angiosperms. For the female gametophytes, okay, inside the ovule, there are eight haploid cells. One of them is the egg cell. Two of them in the center, they are called polar nuclei because they are part of a double fertilization. For sperm, for inside each pollen, actually, we have the pollen tube nucleus that will form the pollen, and there will be two sperms instead of one two sperms, two fertilization. This is why it is called double fertilization. Down the style and into the ovary. The generative cell travels behind the tube cell nucleus. Once near the ovary, now it divides by mitosis to enter? produce two haploid from sperm cells. From the micropyle, cells. the opening of the The pollen ovary. tube reaches the micropyle and releases the sperm cells into the embryo sac. Two sperms One of the are two released. sperm cells 
fertilizes the egg cell. The first sperm fertilizes the egg cell. This egg cell is already one N, haploid cell. And the sperm is also haploid cell, one N plus one N. So the result will be a diploid cell, two N. This diploid cell is the zygote that will develop to form the embryo, okay? The embryo. This is one fertilization, the first one. What about the second one? This produces a diploid zygote, which will become the embryo. The other sperm cell moves up and fuses with both of the central nuclei, These are forming a triploid two. cell. So two this unusual N triploid cell develops into an endosperm and plus serves one as the... N, two N and one N. So in the second fertilization, two N plus one N sperm. So the result will be a triploid cell, 3N. This 3N will form the endosperm. The endosperm. And you will learn today the structure of the seed. So double fertilization because there are two sperms. One sperm will fertilize the egg cell. Where is it found? At the opening. Where is the opening of the ovule, which is called micropie? The second fertilization, the two nuclei, okay, these two bodies, they are already forming a diploid cell 2N with the sperm, so a triploid cell is formed, the 3N, which will form the endosperm. The embryo's food supply during early development. It is only angiosperms, flowering plants, which have this double fertilization characteristic. So it is a unique where a diploid feature, zygote a unique characteristic and a triploid endosperm angiosperms. forms. Gymnosperms, pines, tracheophytes, ferns, and non tracheophytes, mosses, lack this double. Okay. So now let's refer to our diploid cell. On handout. The life cycle of angiosperms. The life cycle of angiosperms shows alternation of generations. This is the life cycle of the plants in general. When larger sporophyte, the two end the diploid cells alternate with the haploid cells, gametophyte. This cycle involves both male and female gametes, which are produced by male and female gametophyte. As you watched in the video, the male gametophyte. We have a pollen which contains two sperm okay? cells, two sperm cells, not only one. For the female gametophyte, as you watched again in the video, inside the ovule, there are eight haploid cells. These nuclei will distribute inside the ovule as the following, okay? I'm going to draw for you here the ovule. This is inside the ovary, and here we have the micropyle, okay, the opening for the ovule. So, as you saw, there are three cells opposite to micropyle, three cells, okay, above the micropyle. The one in the center, I'm going to shade it, is the egg cell and in the center okay there are two so two nuclei in the center are polar nuclei one in nucleus here enlarged and it's located nearest to the micropyle which is the form it will form the egg cell the rest the other will degenerate after fertilization there are eight haploid cells Two of them, the polar nuclei, they will be fertilized with one sperm. The egg cell will be fertilized with the second sperm, while the other cells will degenerate. 
This slide here shows the life cycle of angiosperms. Again, let's go through the structure of the flower. We have the female reproductive part, which contains stigma, where pollen lands, style, and the ovary. Inside the ovary, there are ovules. I noticed in the previous diagram, there was only one ovule. This means that this flower will change into a fruit and this fruit has only one seed. While here, for example, there are many ovules. So once you will cut and you will open the fruit, you will find different seeds, okay? So anther contains uh, the pollen grains, okay? Each pollen grain has, as we said, the pollen tube nucleus. It is called pollen tube nucleus because it will form the pollen tube and two sperm cells. While for female, we have the ovule inside the ovary. There are eight haploid cells. Notice the cells here, one, two, three, four, five. This one here, which enlarged, okay, to form the egg cell, and in the center, the two polar nuclei. This is the micropyle, the opening of the ovule through which sperm will enter. So if you have to draw, okay, a tube to show the movement of a sperm, it's, the two sperms should enter through the micropyle, okay? The outer layer of the ovule, protective layer, it is called integument. This outer layer of the ovule, it's called integument. Now, you are learning what? You are learning seed formation. So after pollination, pollen lands on a stigma. This is the first stage, the first process in seed formation, pollination. After pollination, double fertilization. In double fertilization, there are two fertilization. The first one, the first fertilization, one sperm will fertilize this egg cell. So one N and one N, two N. Diploid cell is formed, which is called the zygote. This zygote will form the embryo. If you remember, you learned before the structure of seed when we discuss it as one adaptation, okay, in which it will help the plants to survive on land. The structure of seed, we will go through the structure of seed today also. You learn that the outermost one is the seed coat, the embryo, and nutritious part. Think of it as an embryo inside the uterus, okay, for a human body. And the nutritious part is the placenta that provide the embryo with the nutrients that it needs, okay? So now, the first stage of fertilization, the formation of zygote, this zygote actually will form the embryo. So this embryo here, developed from what? developed after the fertilization of the egg cell. Uh, what about this nutritious part? You will notice that sometimes we'll say endosperm, sometimes cotyledon. Why? You will learn this in today's session, inshallah. I'm going to name it now the placenta, the nutritious part, okay? This nutritious part, the placenta, the endosperm, or the cotyledon is actually made up of the second fertilization in which one sperm will fertilize the polar nuclei, producing a triploid cell, okay? So embryo is formed from one fertilization. The endosperm is formed from the second fertilization. But what about the third part of the seed? The third part, the seed coat, is formed from this protective layer, which is named integuments. Becomes thicker, harder, and it will form the seed coat. OK. 
Okay. Now let's go through this slide here. It shows what? It shows pollen grain. Okay. The male gametophyte. It has, as we said, two parts. The pollen tube nucleus. If this is the stigma in pollination, the pollen lands on a stigma to secrete enzymes, breaking the stigma. So now what will happen? This nucleus, it will form a tube in which the sperm will travel through this tube until it will reach to the ovule. So in a pollen grain, the first part is pollen tube nucleus which will form the tube. The second part is the sperm. And as you watch in the video, it will go through mitosis, okay? And there will be two sperms before it will reach the ovule. This slide here shows the two stages, okay, of seed formation. We said pollination followed with, in angiosperms, followed with double fertilization. So the first stage, stage or step, pollination. Pollen grain lands on stigma. This is pollination. Then to secrete enzymes, opening the stigma. The second part, as you learned before, is the style. The third part of the pistil or the carpel is the ovary. Inside the ovary, ovule, here is the ovule, okay. The micropyle is the opening of the ovule. For female, there will be eight haploid cells. Can you notice them? One, two, three, four, five. This one, which enlarged, okay is the egg cell, and in the center, the polar nuclei. Now these two sperms, one of them, how to travel and reach to the ovule, this pollen tube will continue in forming and it will enter always through the micropyle. One sperm will fertilize the egg cell and one sperm will fertilize the polar nuclei, forming again and again deployed cell to N, which is the zygote, that it will develop into what? Into the embryo. So what about the polar nuclei? With the sperm, it will form a triploid cell, which will develop into the nutritious part, the endosperm. So what about the seed coat? This outer layer of the ovule, it is called integument becomes harder, thicker, and forming the seed coat. So notice there are many, many slides that are related to double fertilization. But once you actually, and if you understood the video, which is only for four minutes, it summarizes everything that is happening within double fertilization. What is micropyle? As we said, it's an opening through which pollen tube carry the two sperms into the ovule. The main steps of fertilization. Let's go through these steps. The first one, pollen grain lands on a stigma. This is pollination, right? What will happen after that? It secretes enzymes to dissolve and break down the stigma. So here, the first stage, pollen grain lands on stigma pollen grain lands on stigma secretes enzymes breaking down the stigma now notice how the pollen tube will start to form from the pollen tube nucleus the second step the pollen tube nucleus and pollen grain will form the pollen tube that passes down through the style into ovule. The pollen tube enters through micropyle, then it will degenerate and dies, okay? So once it will finish its 
function or job, which is to deliver these two sperms into the ovule, this pollen tube degenerates. So let's go through this slide again. It's the first stage, pollen grain lands on stigma. This is pollination. Now what is happening after pollination? Double fertilization. The first step in double fertilization that the pollen grains secretes enzymes. So this will break the stigma and the pollen will enter. Once it will enter the style, what will start to happen? The pollen tube nucleus, it is named pollen tube nucleus because it will form the pollen tube. So notice now in the second step, the formation of the pollen tube, the two sperms, the pollen tube will carry these two sperms to the ovule. It will enter from where? It will enter from the, the micropyle. And the third step, the two male gametes, the two sperm cells, will pass down the pollen tube until reaching the ovule to fuse with haploid cells, okay? This is called double fertilization. The first one, one sperm, will fertilize the egg cell, this one in the center. Sperm and egg cell, 2N. Zygote, which will form the embryo. The second fertilization, the two polar nuclei. Notice how they already fuse together, like join together. So they are already two. And with the sperm, they will form a triploid cell. This is what? The endosperm, the nutritious part, the placenta. So one sperm, 1N fuses with the egg cell to form a 2N, a diploid zygote, which will develop into embryo. So again, let's draw, I like to name it Mr. Seed. This is the seed. It's formation of seed, right? Pollination followed with double fertilization. The seed has three parts, the embryo, the seed, coat and the nutritious part. This is what the ovule inside the ovary, ovule inside the ovary. As a result of the first fertilization, zygote is formed, which will develop into embryo. As a result of the second fertilization, a triploid cell is formed which will form the endosperm, the nutritious part, or the placenta. The one sperm fuse with the egg cell to form a 2N diploid zygote, which develops in, develop into embryo. The other sperm fuses with the two polar bodies in ovule to form triploid cell, or the endosperm, it is the stored food and cotyledon. How would you say hi? Now the outer protective layer, the third part is the integument. It will thicken and harden to form seed coat. Okay, so these are the three parts. The embryo formed from the fertilization, okay? Uniting, joining of one sperm with the egg cell the endosperm, the nutritious part, or it is the stored food and cotyledon. It is formed because of the second fertilization between one sperm and the two polar nuclei. The third part of the seed, the seed coat, it is formed from the integuments, the outer protective layer of ovule will thicken and harden to form the seed coat. Now, okay, after fertilization, okay, what we discussed until now is happening here within the female reproductive part, the ovary, 
and inside the ovary, we have the ovule. As I told you, if there is only one ovule, it means that one seed is formed. If there are many ovules, it means that there are different seeds. So notice here, each ovule okay, will form a seed. Now here, okay, what about, we said that in angiosperm, seeds are protected within the fruits. So the outer part actually is the fruit. And don't forget, yes, they are bees, but as you learned before, that since they have seeds, so they are fruits and not vegetables. So bees are what are fruits. This fruit actually, it's made up from what? From the ovary. So the ovary enlarged, okay, forming what? The fruit. And the ovules inside the ovary will form different seeds. But what about other parts of the flower, okay? The petals, for example, the stamen, they will dry out and fall off. So after fertilization, ovules in ovary develops into seeds. The ovary enlarged to make a fruit, the other parts dry out and fall off. Hello, what about the seed? The seed that is formed, it has three main parts. Embryo, Hello. number two, you can write nutritious part. In monocot, it's called endosperm. In dicot, it is cotyledon, and you will learn this at the end of the session. And the third part, which is the seed coat. Okay, now. This slide here shows in general the life cycle of plant. So if you plant a seed, notice the three parts here, the seed coat, the nutritious part with the yellow color, and the embryo after germination, okay, a tiny small plant, okay, will develop, which is called seedling, seedling. This seedling will it grow, okay, to form a mature plant now with flowers. These flowers, they contain what? The ovary that contains ovule. The ovary will enlarge to form the fruit. But what about the seeds? Seeds are actually the ovules inside the ovary, but of course after fertilization, okay? And it's a cycle, you can go through it again and again. So steps of life cycle, this slide actually summarizes all the previous points. Okay, I'm going to use this slide with this diagram. So let's start with the first slide. Number one, the first step, an adult sporophyte produces spores. Okay, the male's spores inside anther, the female spores inside pistils. So notice here, the male parts, spores are found within the anther, and the female, they are found here within the ovary. Number two, spores develop into male and female gametophytes. Spores are formed into male and female gametophytes. The male gametophyte, which is what? The pollen grain here, yes? And the female, the ovary. So spores are formed. Number three, male gametophyte produce pollen grains. Each one of them contains two sperms. Notice here, yes, the pollen grain, as we said, it contains the pollen tube nucleus, which will form the pollen tube, and the sperm. This is sperm. So go through mitosis, producing two sperms. While the female gametophyte produces egg and pollen nuclei. Remember the eight haploid cells, okay? The egg, one of them, the egg cell, will be fertilized with one sperm while the polar nuclei, the 2N, is fertilized with the second sperm. Then pollination occurs. Pollination, which is what? 
when the male, the two, when the pollen grain, sorry, lands on a stigma, this is called pollination. After pollination, as we said, the pollen grain secretes enzymes. This will break the stigma. The pollen tube nucleus is formed, carrying the two nucleus. So sperms enter an ovule, then double fertilization occurs. As a result of double fertilization, a zygote forms, egg cell and sperm to N. This zygote will form later on the embryo, develop into embryo, develops into embryo. A triploid cell forms, which is the end of the sperm. Okay, then a seed develops the three parts, the seed coat, the integuments of the ovule, the embryo, and the endosperm. This seed will undergo mitosis to form the sporophytes, okay? Characteristics of seeds, plants, gametophytes. We have the angiosperms, gametophytes, they develop in flower. While in gymnosperms, in gymnosperms, they don't have flowers. They are not flowering plants. If you remember, they are cone-bearing plants. So the gametophytes in gymnosperms, they develop in cones instead. They are very small, <coughs> sorry, in size, made up of a few cells only, so they cannot be seen without a microscope. <coughs> the male gametophyte, are called pollen grains. Okay, they have two or three cells. They produce sperm cells, usually two sperm cells. The female gametophytes, they have eight cells. One of them is the egg cell. After fertilization, the content of the ovule develops into a seed. And we discussed this here. This is the ovule. Its outer layer, the integument will form the seed coat. Fertilization between one sperm and the egg cell will develop into the embryo. The second fertilization, it will form endosperm. Now, how seed plants reproduce? Do you remember the two types of reproduction? Asexual, in which there is only one parent, and sexual reproduction, two parents. Of course, here we have the male reproductive, the male, the male and female. So it is, it is reproducing sexually. But if you remember, as an adaptation, they can reproduce sexually without water. Okay, without water. How? Because the gametophytes are so small, they can be carried by wind, animals. Okay, from to the female structure. In this way, we finish the first part, which is double fertilization. And the second part of today's session is seeds. As I told you, you will learn the structure of the seed, the three parts, their functions, and we will compare between the structure of seed in angiosperms, gymnosperms. In angiosperms, also we'll compare between monocot and dicot. So let's go through this slide here. It shows the three parts within a seed, which we will discuss. The outermost one, this one with the brown color, the seed coat, the nutritious part. You will notice that in some diagrams it is labeled as endosperm, in some diagrams as cotyledon. Why? You will learn this when we will compare between monocot and dicot. And the third part is the embryo. Actually, the embryo is made up of three parts, as you will learn today. The embryo is made up of a part that will form the root. It's called the radical. A part that will form the leaves, the plumule. And the third part is the cotyledon. So the parts of seeds are seed coat, or it has another name. It's called testa, stored food or a nutritious tissue. Embryo, which is made up of three parts, okay, as I told you, a part that will form roots, a part that will form leaves, and the cotyledon. Let's start with the outermost part of a seed, which is the seed coat, or it is called the testa. From where it has been formed, 
it forms from the outer layer of the ovule that harden, okay, becomes thicker and hard as the seed matures. If you remember here, okay, this is the ovule, the outer layer of the ovule, the integument becomes thicker and harder to form the seed coat. Now, why the seed coat is important? We discussed actually before when we discussed the adaptations, okay, that help plants to survive on land. This seed coat protects the embryo from mechanical injury and harsh environment conditions. It will also delay the germination and the growth. So seeds will not germinate unless there are favorable conditions. Okay, how it will keep the water, the oxygen out till the conditions are favorable. What about the second part of the seed, the nutritious part? This nutritious part, always think of it, as I told you, like an embryo during the pregnancy. Okay, during pregnancy, what is protecting the embryo? The uterus of the mothers, right? Okay, the mother in female reproductive system. The placenta provides the embryo with it needs. So the nutritious tissue here is like the placenta. This nutritious tissue and monocot, it's called the endosperm, okay? And dicot, it is completely transferred to the cotyledon, so it is labeled as cotyledon. In angiosperms, the nutritious tissue is called endosperm. Endosperm, which develops from what? from the triploid cell, the 3N, during double fertilization. Endosperm forms in the ovule at the same time the egg is fertilized. So there are two fertilization. Egg is fertilized to produce the zygote, the embryo, while the endosperm is produced from the second fertilization between the pollen nuclei and the second sperm. For gymnosperms, for gymnosperms, the nutritious tissue is part of the female gametophyte. Notice here this diagram. Gymnosperms are what? Are cone-bearing plants. They don't have flowers. Instead, they have cones. There are male and female cones. So this diagram here shows the three parts of seeds in gymnosperms. Remember that both of them, angiosperms and gymnosperms, are seed-producing plants. But in gymnosperms, seeds are unprotected, if you remember. They develop between these scales. So the wing here is actually the scale. You can notice here the three parts of the seed within gymnosperms. For example, pine seed, the outermost part here, is the seed coat. What is this part here? The embryo. So it's similar to what? Seeds in, angio in angiosperms. There are three parts. The outer one, the seed coat. This one here is the embryo, okay? So what about the third part? In angiosperm, we said that it, double fertilization, formation of a triploid cell. This is a unique feature for angiosperms, okay? Not for gymnosperms. So the third part, the nutritious part actually, is a female gametophyte. So the female gametophyte, okay, here as the food supply. So the for nutritious part, in gymnosperms, the nutritious tissue is part of the female gametophyte. In angiosperms, again, we discussed the double fertilization before. The endosperm is formed, okay, after double fertilization. Type so Y, sometimes we said the nutritious tissue, the nutritious part, sometimes it is labeled as endosperm, sometimes it is labeled as cotyledon. Let's see. What is the difference between dicot and monocot seeds concerning the endosperm? In monocot, in monocots, the endosperm is still present in mature seed. I will use this slide here. It shows two seeds. The first one, corn grain, which is an example of monocot. The second one here at the right, bean seed, is an example of dicot. 
Let's first watch this video to recall what did you learn about monocot and dicot. Oops. Monocots, short for monocotyledons, and dicots, short for dicotyledons. You learned this. But what's the difference between these groups, and how can you tell which is which? Well, the name provides the first hint, since monocotyledons have one cotyledon, and dicotyledons have two cotyledons. Two cotyledons not A stem. cotyledon is an embryonic leaf and it is the first leaf to appear once a seed has germinated. These the embryonic leaves one that will appear help the new after plant seed germination. access the nutrients in stored in the seed, giving it a source of nutrients until the true leaves are formed cotyledon. and start to photosynthesize. It the looks true like leaves of monocots and dicots are also different. While monocots have leaves with parallel veins and long, slender blades, you dicots have... all of have these differences actually before, okay? I want to again to watch this part. Plants can be put in one of two groups monocots, short for monocotyledons, monocotyledons. and dicots, dicotyledons. short for dicotyledons. Like the abbreviation. But what's the difference between these groups, and how can you tell you which? You learned before all the differences narrow, long leaf with parallel veins. This is for monocot, for their Petals, for example, they are multiple of three, if you remember. They have fibrous roots, okay? But the name is actually related to what? To the number of cotyledons that they have. Once the seed germinate, this first part which will appear, it looks like a leaf, right? This is why we define cotyledon as modified leaves. Yes? Which is which? Well, the name provides the first hint. Since monocotyledons have Notice one cotyledon, one cotyledon and dicotyledons have two cotyledons. A cotyledon is an embryonic leaf and it is the first leaves, leaf yes? to appear once a seed has germinated. These embryonic leaves help the new plant access the nutrients stored in the seed, giving it a source of nutrients until the true leaves are formed and start to photosynthesize. Giving it a source of nutrients. The as true I told leaves you, like of the monocots placenta. and dicots are Let's also these different. Differences, just While monocots have leaves with parallel veins and long, slender blades, dicots have broader leaves with branched veins. The stems leading up to these different leaves are also different. Monocots have their vascular bundles scattered haphazardly, although most are found near the edge of the stem. Dicots, however, have their vascular bundles a arranged ring. in a ring. In a ring there is also a difference between the flowers of the plants in each group. Monocot flowers will usually form with petals in multiples of three, while dicot flowers four will have petals five. in multiples of four or five. Underground, we see yet five another important roots, difference remember? between monocots and dicots. While monocots before. have fibrous roots, which splay out in every which direction, Dicots have a taproot tap system, which means okay. they have one main root oh, from good. which smaller roots branch off, while fibrous roots stick to the upper layer of soil. Okay. So we have here monocot or monocotyledon, a seed for monocot, and this one simply looks it's two, so dicotyledon. Each seed, as you learned, it's made up of three parts. I will draw it again. The outermost part, whether it is monocot or dicot, the outermost one is the seed coat. So for monocot, this outer part is the seed coat. In dicot, this crown part, the outer part, the dicot. Okay? The second part of a seed is the embryo. The embryo is made up actually of three parts. The embryo is made up of three parts. Part of it will grow into root. So it's called embryonic root. 
embryonic root. It has another name. It is known as radical. So embryonic root or radical. So this part, once the seed germinate, it will grow and form what? The root. The second part is the embryonic leaves. It's called plumules. Whether it is monocot or dicot, okay? The third part of the embryo is the cotyledon. Okay, this is the embryo. So seed coat, embryo, and the third part is the nutritious tissue, right? This is the nutritious tissue. In, in monocot, the nutritious tissue, the endosperm, still present. So I'm going to use here, for example, green color. This is the endosperm, the placenta, the nutritious part. Okay? The embryo is made up of three parts. The embryonic root, which will form the root, the embryonic leaves, and the cotyledon. This is in monocot. So what about dicot? In monocot, endosperm still present. In dicot, the endosperm provides the cotyledon with all of the nutrients. So the nutritious part here now is actually what is called cotyledons. So in dicot, you will not find endosperm anymore. It provides the cotyledon, the dicotyledon to be more specific with all of the nutrients. What is the difference between dicot and monocot? See, it's concerning the endosperm. In monocots, such as corn, wheat, grass, the endosperm is still present in mature seeds. Again, notice here, in monocot, the endosperm still present. What about dicots? The nutrients in the endosperm have already been transferred to the embryo by the time the seed mature, okay, through the cotyledons. Hello, what is the difference between embryo and cotyledons? As I told you, the embryo, it's made up of three parts. The embryonic root, the radical, which will form the root, grows into root. The embryonic leaves, the plumule. And the third part, is the cotyledon, which will, it's modified. The first part that will appear, it looks like leaves, okay? They are modified seed leaves. They are part of the embryo, part of the embryo. The function of it is to transfer the nutrients to the embryo. This diagram here shows a gymnosperm that we discussed its parts, okay? The seed coat, the nutritious part, it's part of the female gametophyte, and the embryo, okay? Once we plant a seed, the seed coat splits, okay? Then it will start to germinate. Notice how the first leaves that are, will appear are actually the cotyledon, which we define them as modified leaves, okay? This diagram here is comparing, for example, between monocot, dicot, and gymnosperms. Notice for monocot, the first leaf which will appear, which is one cotyledon, there will be only one. In dicot, there will be two, yes? And this diagram again shows planting or germination of gymnosperms. In this way, okay? I discussed with you the materials that we covered within week five. Week five actually is what, is what it was a hard week for me since we lost two of our colleagues. May their souls, okay, rest in peace. This is Sandra. I am sure that all of you, or let's say most of you, you know her. She was an English teacher and 
head of English department in our school for years. And Mr. Hassan Al Musa, Allah irhamu, he was also our head of uh, science department. And I know also that this week it was a hard week for you, our seniors, since you were waiting for the end of week five. It was your graduation day. As qadr Allahu ma sha'a fa'al, wa insha'Allah. The most important thing is to stay home, as I always say to you, and stay safe. Take care of yourself and bye bye. Ramadan Kareem, Ya Rabbi. Okay. Okay.